Welcome back to part four of the RuneScape botting tutorial, where we'll finish up our woodcutting bot. As always, I'm Ben, and this is Learn Code by Gaming. So we've actually covered every concept you need to know to build an awesome bot in RuneScape. In this video, we're going to put that knowledge into practice by fixing all the issues with our woodcutting bot. It's this last mile that really makes all the difference in the software you write. It's the difference between an impressive application or a frustrating experience. So the first thing I want to do with our bot is overhaul the drop logs function. I'm going to show you how we can use our new knowledge about pixel matching to detect when a log appears in our inventory. This will prevent a potential major bug with our code where we could drop a valuable item instead of just a log. It will also allow us to greatly speed up our harvesting because we know as soon as we see a log in our inventory, we can move on to the next tree. Once we get that working, we'll again use pixel matching, this time to verify that a tree we're about to click on is actually a tree that we want to chop down. This will prevent those situations where a screen click doesn't quite result in a tree being cut either because we've clicked on the wrong type of tree, we were slightly off the mark, or we clicked on another brown pixel, like from one of the logs that we're leaving everywhere on the ground. With these improvements, our automation is gonna be looking really good. Okay, so let's go back to our drop logs function. And like I said, what we wanna do here is we wanna detect that the item that we're about to drop from our inventory is actually a log. And to do that, we're just gonna detect a single pixel. So inside the game, when we're clicking on our inventory to drop one of the logs, we're always clicking in the same pixel location. So why don't we go ahead and check to see what color that pixel is when there's actually logs in our inventory. And then once we know what that pixel color should be when there's logs in our inventory, we can use that pixel color to always confirm that there are actually logs there. So in our drop logs function, let's go ahead and check to see what pixel color is at this pixel location in the inventory. So I'll create a new variable here for our, let's call it pixel color. And previously, when we used robot.js to look at the pixels, we were first taking a screen capture, and then we were going through and looking at multiple pixel locations inside that screen capture. That's what we did in the find tree function. And that's what you want to do if you are trying to look at multiple places on the screen at once, is take a screen capture first, and then you can use that image to look through multiple pixels. But if you just need a single pixel value, you can do that more simply. We can just use robot.getPixelColor. And then it just needs the x and y coordinates. So we'll use our inventory x and our inventory y. And that will get you the pixel color at these pixel coordinates when this line of code is run. And then to find out what that color is, let's go ahead and just print it out to the log. So now I'll go ahead and run our code. And I'll begin with some logs in my inventory. So now when our mouse moves over to drop those logs, it should have also printed out the color that it found at that pixel location. And so if we look back at our terminal output, we'll find the color there. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll save this to a variable. Color var inventory log color. So this is the color we expect to find at this pixel location whenever we have logs in our inventory. And if there isn't a log at this expected location, it would instead grab this kind of muddy green color. So now back in our drop logs code, we can go ahead and get rid of this debug statement. And let's wrap this code here to actually click on and drop those from the inventory. Let's wrap this in an if statement and only drop it if the log color is found. So if, the color that we found at that pixel location is equal to the double equal sign, the inventory log color that we expect. In that case, we'll go ahead and do that right click, uh, move down, and then do that left click to drop the item. So now we're protected from dropping something from our inventory that doesn't look like a log because we're going to drop the logs from our inventory if the color matches the expected log color. Also notice a small bug where sometimes the logs aren't dropped properly. I think that's happening because sometimes we're right clicking and then trying to do a left click too quickly before the game realizes what happened. So let's add a short delay between those two clicks. And now that we can detect when a log appears in inventory, we can use that to our advantage to harvest faster. 
So if we go back up to the main function, we can see that right now we're by default always waiting eight seconds between each click on a tree. Let's go ahead and change that base wait time to just three seconds. And then inside drop logs, let's create a sort of holding pattern where we check that pixel color once every second. And we'll set some sort of maximum for how long we want to wait before we give up on that tree. So let's create a while loop here. And we're going to check the pixel color that we found. And as long as it's not equal to the log color that we're expecting to find when we chop down a tree, let's go ahead and wait a little bit longer. Let's sleep for one second. And as our code is written here, I want you to think through the flow a little bit. When we enter the drop logs function, first it's going to look up this pixel color. And then we enter this while loop where as long as the pixel color isn't equal to the inventory log color, it's just going to wait another second. So the only way we're ever going to exit this loop is if we update the pixel color with the new pixel color, that pixel location. So let's go ahead and sample that pixel again just by copying that code. Because we're reassigning the value to pixel color here, we're not declaring it for the first time, we don't need the VAR keyword. So here we're waiting a little bit longer to see if the chopping finishes. And here we're going to sample the pixel color again after waiting. So this should work pretty well. The idea is we find a tree, then we're going to move the mouse over to that tree, we're going to click on it, then we're going to wait three seconds. And then after three seconds, we're going to attempt to drop logs. And in the drop logs function, we'll first check the pixel where we expect the logs to be inside our inventory. And then as long as we don't find the expected color there, we're going to end this loop and we're going to wait for one second and then sample that pixel again. And then eventually, hopefully, we find the pixel color that we're waiting for. And once we do, it'll go ahead and drop those logs from out of our inventory. But of course, there's always the possibility that we never get those logs in our inventory. Maybe some other item is occupying that space in the inventory where we expect our logs to show up. So let's account for that by creating a maximum wait time for our while loop here. So I'll first create a variable. I'll call it wait cycles. I'll start that at zero, and this will keep track of how many times we've been through the while loop. Then I'll create another, another variable. I'll call it max wait cycles. And the value we set here will determine how long do we want to wait for one of these logs to show up in the inventory. So I'm gonna set mine to nine. So nine cycles through, we have our base, three second wait time, and then up to nine seconds more. So at most we'll wait 12 seconds for a log to appear in our inventory. So first we need to remember to increment our counter inside the while loop. So that's the wait cycles that keeps track of how many times we've been in the loop. And I'll use the plus plus there. So each cycle through, wait cycles will increase by one. And then in our condition for the while loop, we need to not only check to see if we found that color yet, we also want to check to see have we gone through these full nine cycles. Because if we have gone nine cycles, we want to exit out of the while loop. So whenever you're writing a conditional, if you want to check two things at once inside your conditional, you can use double ampersand, meaning and. And we'll check to see if the wait cycle that we're on is less than the max wait cycles. So as long as wait cycles is less than nine, it'll continue through this while loop as long as this first condition is also true. So with this and condition, you need both the conditions on the left and the right of them to be true for the entire condition to evaluate as true. If you wanted to check if either the condition on the left or the right is true, you could use an or statement. And for that you use two pipes. But in this case, we wanna wait and continue sampling pixel colors while the pixel we find is not the log color and while we haven't gone through the cycle nine times. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see if I missed anything. Okay, so you can see already that our script is moving much faster. We're not always waiting for those eight seconds every time. But you can see when we do click somewhere that doesn't result in a tree being chopped down, in that case, we do have to wait the full 12 seconds, which will slow us down. So as long as we're clicking on trees successfully, our script moves pretty fast. But every time we have a mistake and we don't click on a tree successfully, that's really going to slow us down. So that means we'll be able to really speed up our bot if we can somehow confirm 
before we click on a tree, that what we click on is actually going to result in a tree being chopped. So one way I noticed we could do that is when you hover your mouse over a certain location, over in the upper left hand corner of the screen, it'll show the action you're about to take if you were to click on that pixel location. So you can see if I'm hovering over these logs, it'll say take logs. If I'm hovering over this tree, it'll say chop down tree. So my thinking is, is we can check the pixels right over there where it says chop down tree, and we can look for one of those aqua colored pixels Make sure it's there before we actually click. And I'm going to try to look for one of the pixels at the end of the word tree, probably the last E. That way we can detect that it's actually going to be a tree and it's not going to be one of these oak trees which you might not be able to chop down when your character is woodcutting level one. So back in the code, let's go down to the find trees function. Yeah, find tree. And this is what's searching all those pixels in the screenshot we took to look for that tree color. So I think it'd be great right here before we do return that we found a tree. This is where we can verify that what we're about to click on is actually going to be a tree. So I'm going to end up writing a new function for this, uh, but I always like to do the calls for the functions first, and that will inform what I need to do to write the function. So if I'm going to call this new function confirm tree, and then let's give it the pixel coordinates that we're about to click on. So it'll be screen x and screen y and then we'll have this function return true if it confirms it is a tree so if it returns true we'll have found a tree and we can return those coordinates else if it doesn't confirm the tree let's just do some debug output here so instead of saying found a tree at let's call it unconfirmed tree at that location. Okay, so if we find that blue pixel in the upper left-hand corner where we expect it to be, then confirm tree will have that return true. Otherwise, we'll just have it return false. So I'll go ahead and copy that. So when I'm going to write my function, I'll just put it below the camera here. Keyword function, the name of our function, and then the two parameters that we're passing in. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move the mouse to that pixel location that we think we're about to click. That way the action appears in the upper left hand corner. And then once our mouse is there, we can go ahead and sample that pixel color. So first move the mouse to the given coordinates. Do that with robot move mouse. Screen X, screen Y. And then let's wait a moment. We'll wait for that help text to actually appear. So I'll just use sleep. Do another 300 milliseconds, let's say. And then now check the color of the action text. So I'll call this check X and check Y for the pixel that we want to check. And then you can go ahead and use our screen capture technique again. Print screen. Open up paint. And then I want one of these aqua pixels at the end of the word tree here. So the coordinates I'm going to use are 103 for the X and 63 for the Y. And now we can go ahead and get that pixel color just the same way we did for dropping the logs. We can just call the get pixel color. I'll even just copy that code. Of course, we're going to use the check X and check Y. And then the pixel color we're checking for is that blue cyan sort of color. And you could write if the pixel color equals, I think it's C0FFFF. And of course, you could check that by using a trick from before. Use the sample tool, try to get that aqua color. Edit colors. And I can see from the red, green, blue, the green and blue is full max 255, and the red is zero. And that corresponds to this hex code. You could also look up that hex code, of course. You could Google search for RGB to hex. Put in that RGB 0, 255, 255, 
and there's that cyan color, and there's the hex code for it right there. So if that's that color we're looking for, we can return true. Else, if that isn't the pixel color we expect, we can return false. And you can use this code, it'll work fine. We can actually shorten it down a little bit. We know that this conditional will always evaluate to a true or false. So we can actually just return that conditional itself. So I would do return if that pixel color equals that color. And this will return true or false from our confirm tree function. So let's give this a try and see how it goes. So I've been letting this run for a little while and it hasn't made any mistakes yet. So let's go back and check our logs. Looking at the logs in our terminal, you can see that it did have an unconfirmed tree at one point. And so it didn't click there, it went and found a different tree right here. We can also see that it's rotated the camera a few times successfully. And it's also found several different colors from our tree bark array that we have. And so that is our beginner woodcutting bot. To wrap up this tutorial, I wanna leave you with some ideas for what your next steps could be. You followed along with me up to this point but to really lock in your understanding, it'd be a great idea to take some steps out on your own. So here's five ideas for expanding and improving upon this bot from easiest to hardest. Exit the script if you've done five camera rotations in a row, because if that happens, you've probably left the forest. Automatically log out when your script ends. You can do this by automating a couple of mouse clicks. Adapt this script for mining instead of woodcutting. It should be very similar, but obviously you'll be looking for different colors. I haven't tried this one myself, so there could be some unforeseen difficulties. You could automatically log out when you're attacked by monitoring your health. Instead of dropping logs one by one, try dropping multiple of them at once. Consider that you'll now be dealing with multiple inventory locations. And if you continue to check just one color to determine what's in your inventory, you'll need to be very precise about what pixels you're checking. Using relative coordinates, that is, how far offset one item in your inventory is from another, will help make this easier. And this will obviously also affect our wait cycle code. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the tutorial, and if you think this is a good way to learn JavaScript. Also, if you're attempting any of the exercises and need a little bit of help, feel free to reach out to me about that in the comments too, and I'll do my best to help you. And with that, I'll see you next time.